So in 17th place, we had the Orcas. Uh, predicted in 10th, down seven. Now, uh, something I think we should uh, point out first and first and foremost is that um, this team roster is not the same team roster that was registered. So um, for those that were paying attention, uh, uh, Flash, Hybrid, and uh, Drake are missing from this team. They didn't end up playing pre-nets for one reason or another. Um, but in their place, they were replaced by um, Skull One and Basilisk Hill. Um, I believe Basilisk Hill was is a rookie WA player, and Skull One is like a you know player that's been around for a long time. He's living in Hobart, is that correct, Ram? Yeah, so he's been in Hobart about a year, about a year and a half now, something like that. Uh, maybe just yeah, I think just after COVID, and he trains infrequently so uh, maybe like once a uh, fortnight once every three weeks or so yeah oh uh, yeah you'll notice everyone that um as per the last review stream any teams that didn't get their photo done had a had a drawing done by me i actually put a bit of effort into some of them uh, some more than others <laughs> um i'm pretty happy with the mr me six one i think i did a pretty good job with that but anyway um is that is that the pink one there with the no, that's that's, a, that's like a care that's like a care bear, Simi bear. So oh, that's Simi just caring for everybody in the <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so this team was in seventeenth place throughout the entire duration of the comp. Um, the average score didn't change very much either. Um, but you know, it's kind of to be expected when half of your team and arguably the three three of the strongest players on the team uh, get swapped for people that. You know, like Basilisk Kill is a rookie, Skull One hasn't played with these guys before. Um, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Um, but um, yeah, so in terms of how this team played, um, I don't think, because obviously between Butzer, Runt, and I, we were all playing like towards the top end. So I think between all of us, we probably only versed the Orcas a, a couple times. Um, but I guess. Yeah, I think my only observation is it's 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 pretty much, you know, if this team roster was known before, they probably would have been predicted like in that bottom bottom three, if not seventeenth place. So, um, but um, all things considered, um, watching the games and stuff, uh, refing a few games and things, uh, I think the team. I uh, was very impressed and happy with how Basilis Hill did, given like they were just kind of out of the blue, like, hey, can you quickly come to pre -nets? And he was like, uh, okay. Um, so I think, um, you know, kudos, kudos to Basilis Hill for clutching up and, you know, letting this team actually play the competition, which is, you know, arguably the most important thing, right? Um, yeah. Um, in terms of how they played, it looks like they pretty much played a standard 3-2, which um, is got sort of less common towards the top end in the Hobart maze, but in the bottom, towards the lower end where the teams aren't quite as like coordinated and drilled out and practiced together. I think it is the right way to play it. Um, I think Simi's teams in the past brainouts were getting a bit over complex, so I think the way they played at this comp was probably the right way to do it. So we had sort of Simi and Rogue often you to attack as you sort of, we need to get bases because otherwise we'll just lose the base race. Leave the other three to defense and they held out all right, but probably going to get a bit, a bit outgunned. Um, Simi is not really an attacker nor is Rogue, so they actually, they, they, they played quite solidly and the wins they got, they were deserved because mm -hmm. yeah. Um, as I say, Simi's like probably the strongest she's been significantly, I'd say, like um, in terms of like actually like attacking and playing other positions and stuff. So I think that was good to see. Um, and yeah, reality is this team's just like a throw together last second. They just want to play kind of team. Yeah, they did. Um, like if you look at their stats, the tag ratios for the, you know, the three core players of the team were between 85 and 90, uh, which isn't bad given that they're... Uh, you know, they weren't playing, they were playing out of position, essentially. And bases, you know, Simi went at 1.3 a game, which is one of the higher kind of base averages. So they were getting bases. Um, they were a bit expensive on bases with denials, but that's to be expected when they're, um, you know, they're playing out of position, uh, essentially, and they don't have their, like, core attack there. So I think they, they just fought hard. They just they tried, their, tried their ass off, uh, even though they were undermanned. Um, so, yeah, all credit to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, I don't really have have anything to add. I don't think, um, you know, uh, I think 
it's a bit i guess it's a bit up in the air whether um because orcas were obviously registered for nationals as well they might not be coming with the the full roster so we'll see what happens there but um i guess in terms of points points of improvement for as far as i'm aware simi rogue and mr meeseeks are still on the orcas um do we have any points of improvement for for these three players well do we know if they're if they're what's happening with the rest of their team is there any news on that or is that still an un unknown um i think it's confirmed that they have lost um they've lost hybrid and flash um but they have got drake so drake was only out due to covid so he'll be back for nats and they've also picked up lewis uh worthy from bendigo as a spare player to replace hybrid and flash so they're gonna be a five-man team and they're actually gonna be quite solid so i'm very keen to see how they do it nats yeah, Do we have be, any points of improvement for for Simi Simi Bear Rogue and Mister Me Seeks? Not that I can see. Yeah, it's pretty hard to say when we didn't play them a great deal and they were playing undermanned. Uh, so yeah, it'll just be get their get their f new five together, and I guess they're kind of starting again in a way. They've got arena mm. experience, um, and it's like okay, now they've got to get the new synergy with the new combination and. Um, certainly, it look on paper, it looks like they'll be a stronger combination than they were at pre -nats. So, yeah, no doubt they'll be giving it everything they got. You got anything, Run? No, I think we're good to go. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Well, you know, again, kudos to, to Orcas. Um, I'm just glad that they were able to pull together a couple players so that they could actually play the tournament. Um, and we'll see what they're able to... Um, I, obviously, we definitely expect orcs to do a lot better at nationals when they've um when they've got drake back and um worthy is also like a good pickup as well like he's a pretty decent player also keen to see what worthy does um in terms of production and media team stuff because he's always been really helpful with that kind of thing so um now that he's at that's keen to see what he does there all righty we'll move on to the 16th place team we have kismet run i believe you wanted to talk about them but before you do and um, they were predicted 14th um so they were down two from their predictions um across uh the stages 13th and round robin 13th of cascade one dropped two up to cascade two and then dropped one more in finals um in terms of notable stats uh moldy actually had the third highest um average score of 10,012. So well done to Moldy raking in the tags, but um, yeah, run. What did you what did you see about how this team played? Um, so it's important to consider with this team when we predicted them. Uh, where do we predict them? We predicted them fourteenth. Uh, we predicted them with Ling Ling. So we were kind of expecting the team to be a Moldy Ling Ling powerhouse and the new players, the newer players, um, to kind of be a bit weaker. And it would we were really expecting that like two person putting on a show now then Ling got sick so this team is down the one of their strongest players Ling is insane in this maze on these packs so the fact that throughout the comp they were playing higher than we were predicting them we, when they were down one of their strongest players which was a lot of the reason we were predicting them in that spot in the first place was insane so like they're playing we're better than we expected them to without one of their strongest players. So these guys are amazing. Um, and I think Moldy did a very good job captaining. He was playing very well pack on pack. He was, I'd say, one of the strongest people on pack in there, especially impressive considering he's just picked up the packs the first time, essentially. Um, and the other guys did really well. They uh, they listened perfectly was the feedback I was seeing, hearing, uh, which is all you can ask for in like sort of a less experienced team. And I think it really got results. Like these guys were scalping stronger teams consistently and playing way higher than they should be based on their players. So yeah, I think these guys were great to watch. Um, Benny was very impressive. Uh, as you said, he'd be Holmes. I, it's, yeah. Uh, like Let's we... go, Benny. <laughs> Benny popped off. Benny pulled up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, Who's I think this he was Ling Ling guy? <laughs> Benny. Benny yeah. all day. He was definitely a very solid pickup for Moldy to be able to use, especially on attack and that sort of stuff, and just very consistent, at, especially like getting doubles on defense and just like keeping the doors clear. Great columns, as Adelaide usually do. Um, Gypsy was very solid, um, and then Ems and Crosshair are very new. So they've got some potential, which we're definitely seeing in this team. And yeah, I think these guys played amazingly for where 
for being Dunling. It's I, I, they had a rough finals day. It looked like um, bit, so a bit unfortunate to drop. I think Moldy three places got from where sick you're on the last day. Is what uh, I heard a bit so did all of us. He was, was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Moldy was Moldy. Moldy was playing. I'd say at a hundred percent. As you see him at any competition, he's always sick. <laughs> so that's not the excuse. For <laughs> that's <probably. laughs> true. <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, from talking with Benny a little bit, the basic way they played the game was just a standard three-two. Moldy would go on a, on a attack, and uh, Benny would be the opening batsman. Um, and then yeah, you know, try and get Benny a base or two, and then you know, depending on what's happening, send it home. And I think Gypsy was would be the, the next person out. Um, yeah, and like, it's insane that their three and defense is like holding decently strong when they take their two strongest players out, and the rest are like Gypsy, who's solid, and then like two brand new, brand brand new players. Like, it's it's yeah. tough to defend sometimes even with one newer player. When, um, but yeah, with two new players, it's it's very nicely done. If I'm not yeah, mistaken, yeah. Crosshair was a new player from Albury. That's yeah. kind of just come in. Yeah, Benny wanted. Benny wanted me to highlight that um, Crosshair did um, much better than he expected. I guess, like, as a Benny's a player that's already been to a Nats now. He's been playing for actually quite a few years. He's been in the league scene for for, for a long time. Um, a player that he'd heard hadn't played very much, hadn't been to a tournament before, and now he's come to pre-Nats uh, 3 against some, like, absolutely, like, monster teams. Uh, Benny wanted me to highlight. He requested that I highlight. Crosshair did very well, um, all things considered. So, well done, Crosshair. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, if you're gonna if you're gonna highlight Crosshair. I've got to highlight Ems because uh, yeah, Ems has been playing for such a short amount of time. Like she's only started playing league maybe a couple of seasons ago, maybe three seasons ago, and she's just stepping into like the regional scene in Queensland. Um, so to come to a tournament like that with that level of opponent, um, she came out with an eighty percent tag ratio for the tournament, which is pretty impressive. There's a, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of players. Uh, who've been playing for a long time that are sitting around that, that around that mark so yeah i thought that was really impressive from her um and she yeah she's somebody who just is one of those players that just gets it very early like you could tell when she first started she kind of understands the game understands the importance of comming does the basics well um so yeah expect her to to keep improving at a good rate as well and yeah moldy was a handful like, even from training we trained with him on the first day and he was just slapping me around the arena i'm like oh my god this is yeah once he gets uh, into the Cobras, once Cobras, yeah. Cobras land, and he, he's telling me that uh, V-Dark's a monster um, at the moment. Uh, and I was like, oh, my God, well, you're a monster at the moment. So. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, training with Moldy, it's like, oh, I want to show him some stuff to, like, help him do well this this weekend because, like, this like, is a really great team and they're down league and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, Moldy, like, is how you do this kind of thing but they're like no but they're going to come back with cobras and absolutely rail us if we tell them too much this is yeah. a, t a tough balancing act yeah. i thought i thought he did a great job of organizing the team like yeah he did put himself in the box seat to get all the points and stuff like that but he kind of had to like that was his role and i think on every team there was kind of kind of two strikers you might call them who had to go out and get 50 tags uh and and try and get the opportune bases um and he was that player he just did it did it really well um and yes he copped up a few denials but i think if you're going out with a two-man attack it's probably going to happen a bit like that um you're probably going to cough a few denials up so yeah it was hats off to moldy i thought he captained the team really well yes very very well done by everyone here um before we move on do we have any particular points of improvement for any of the obviously the players aren't going to be playing together but maybe and for any individuals anything that stood out to you gentlemen not too much i i, I thought they were playing at the pretty much peak of their experience from what i saw so i, I think just keep on keep on focusing on improving and keep on going yeah it's practice when you it's uh, about get, getting the fundamentals down um for some of these guys because they're quite an experience so it's just train 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 that's the best advice for improvement at that at that stage no worries well well done to kismet we'll see uh most if not all of these players at nationals but um we'll move on to our 15th place team we have hobart cerberus uh so they were predicted 15th finished 15th so they were even with their predictions um win for the lsa predictions um <laughs> in terms of their record so they started in 10th 
dropped one spot yeah. in Cascade yeah, 1, I dropped one spot in Cascade that. 2, and then dropped three spots in the finals. Um, the average score didn't deviate too much. Um, did I have any... Nah, cool. Um, on the team, we have Tiger, Rizla, Nelly, Captain Morgan, Dominator, and Flick. Um, yeah. Who, who want to talk about these boys? Was it Butter? Yeah, yeah Butter. Take yeah, us away. These, I've, I've, I've got these boys. Uh, and are they all boys? Or have we got any girls on there? Anyway, Thank these you. people. Um, hey, yeah, the people. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I this is probably the best C team from Hobart we've ever seen. Um, they were really impressive. I we actually they did cause some upsets. They did take points off Archangels, I think, uh, and off Aubrey and off us. Actually, the first game that we <laughs> played them, they beat us, uh, and it was I was uh, I have to tell the story of, of what happened in that game because. Uh, essentially, we were green, they were blue. Uh, the strategy was um, Taipan said, okay, Butsa, you go over to Cerberus and you still score points for the first couple of minutes. And I proceeded to go over to Cerberus and cough a whole bunch of tags <laughs> up to them. Um, and then I put my, I think I put two shots into the base, like two individual shots and got denied and then went, actually, this isn't actually working the way we were supposed to, we're supposed to be working. And then uh, managed to scuttle back to green base with my tail between my legs saying, uh, no, that's not working. Uh, but what got me was that they were so well set up. So yeah, they might have some inexperienced players on the team, but they were so well organized and set up. There was no way I was able just to go over there and just score the points the way I wanted to. They out positioned me and uh, out hustled me as a team. And uh, yeah, we were, it was early in the comp and they beat us. So we still hadn't kind of figured out how to set our players up around green and they just took full advantage of it. They just basically walked in the back door, took our base three or four times uh, and that put us on the back foot from the start. So, and they managed to pinch the game off us. So they played incredibly well. Um, have to take my hat off to a couple of players. Tiger, he's, has he been playing for nine months, right? <laughs> yeah, I started in uh, November, so something like, yeah. yeah, nine months about. Yeah, so, I mean, he's been playing for nine months. He's one of their strikers, if you want to call him that, one of their opening batsmen going out, getting bases, scoring tags. Uh, what's his base average there? 1.6. So he's getting 1.6 bases for the tournament. Um, yes, he got denied a bit, 1.5 denials a game, but hey, he's been playing nine months and he's playing against top level opponents. So that's totally fine. I'd be taking that every day of the week if I was Cerberus. Uh, and uh, was he opening up with Rizla? Is Rizla the, the other? Um, it's often kind of Dominator and Tiger out first or Rizla and Dominator out first because Tiger is either swapped back into anchor or starts anchor. So one of the two of those. Um... So yeah, Rizla, Dom, and um, Tiger are your attackers, yeah. Yeah, so, well, they did, uh, I thought they just played really well. Um, they obviously tailed off at the end a little bit as the uh, visiting teams learnt the arena. And yeah, they did drop on the final day, but if you actually look at the results, it, they didn't lose by much. Like, they lost a game by 4K from, they were third and 4K was, first was in 4K ahead. And they also got a second by 2K uh, behind first. So. They were like right in those games, so they shouldn't be disappointed with uh, how they performed when they're coming up against um, you know really experienced opponents. So yeah, just thought they were. Oh, who was the last line to run in that team? Well, uh, it's either Tiger or often Captain Morgan kind of thing, or okay. sometimes Flick. It, it, it they change it a lot each base. E everyone plays different okay. roles, different bases. So, um, but yeah, Tiger is the one that plays green and red usually and then you have captain morgan at blue often yeah it was a bit hard usually you can tell by the stats who's playing last line because they'll have a mm. higher tag ratio but it was a bit hard to tell um but yeah a bit of a shout out to nelly too because nelly come out with a 0.98 tag ratio for the tournament which i thought mm. was um was really good as well so yeah uh that's that's what did you guys think of the old cerberus i mean yeah they just continue to impress like um like they're, they're pretty much all first year players. Um, even if you take into fa you factor in home field advantage, they, these guys should not be playing anywhere near this well. They had a rough last game uh, day where really we really need to work out how to fix Hobart's last day performances. We're very bad <laughs> at them historically. I wouldn't be surprised if it's lack of competition experience and playing under pressure. So is that something you just fix with experience? Uh, do you know Butza how to improve last day performance at all? Anything specific for them? Uh, I think it's like you said. It's um, 
tactics, playing. You need to uh, play tournaments where you you know you get you nervous the first time you go into finals and stuff like that. And the more you do it, the less nervous you get. Uh, and the more nervous you are, the the, the less handoffs you win. Um, you know, you, you might miss a com here and there because you're you're overstimulated or whatever. Uh, so I just think it's experience, just doing it. Um, so the, having the prenuts through experience will bode well for them for for nationals. Yeah, for sure. Um, so hopefully a bit more experience and they can just keep a bit more level-headed on the finals and not bomb out with pressure because they're playing so much better than 15th place throughout the competition and then they just have a rough last game. day, lose by a few K and then bomb out, unfortunately. Yeah. When I was looking at things for... Oh, are we ready for things for improvement, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go shoot. Yeah, absolutely. When I was looking at things for improvement, I was looking at um, their tag ratios and just going, okay, they're just it's fundamentals for these guys. It's just like train. Just go to training and train and train and train um, and just get better at the fundamentals, pack skills, using panels, that kind of a thing. Uh, Watch a handful team... or two of uh, the LSA instructional videos <laughs> on panel. Shameless plug stuff. insert here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, just just you know, get to training and keep playing. Uh, that's that's the biggest thing they can work on because they they it seems like they had like good camaraderie. Like they were always hanging out in the foyer and having a laugh. Like every time we walked past them, you know, coming up the stairs to the, to the uh, to time zone, they were always have, having a smile, having a laugh, willing having a joke with us. You know, so uh, they've got the good good energy, and that's important because um, you know. That I feel like you win more standoffs and you play better when the energy's up and, and you're mm -hmm. having a laugh and all those kinds of things. If you start getting, you know, Sally sad pants, uh, things just can downhill spiral very quickly. So these guys have got that going for them. Yeah. Have well, we got any last little tidbits we want to add about Hobart Cerberus before we, uh, before we move on? I mean, <clears throat> I think I just have to point out like sixth on the solo ladder. For GRC, yeah. of like third competition of a fourth competition ever, insane. Um, he's just taking new information and just absorbing it so insanely fast. It's, it's I can't ride home without it enough. Say videos. Yeah. So a tag ratio. So he's one point one four tag ratio. So there's some of the GC game controllers, captains, whatever you want to call them, from some of the top teams didn't achieve that. Mm. So he's he's achieving a, a, a around the same tag ratio or higher than some of the top level captains that were that were running teams in there so yeah. uh yeah pretty impressive if i'm not mistaken dominator is the in-game leader for this team is that right yeah Dom, dom's definitely captain um and yeah he, he did well uh, for sure um and you see his tag ratio and stuff mm -hmm. suffering because he's that captain but having to make those calls especially with a newer team you're doing a lot more organizing like please stand right here and just get copying yeah. shots because of it yeah, I think um, no, he's just still one out, he's last still thing on um, just one last thing on on improvements. So Butzer was talking about like the camaraderie and stuff, and you know if you start getting into negative mindsets and vibes and stuff, um, typically is you it's easier to fall into that on the later days because the pressure's building. Um, <clears throat> I did see this team unfortunately come out of a few games towards the end of the tournament, and they're all like, um, I'm not sure what the subject was, but there's you know very angry words being exchanged between people um so i think um that'd be a, a a really important point of improvement for these guys obviously they're all young um and it's it is hard to you know we all care the only reason we get mad is because we care about the outcome of the game so much right um we're, we're, we're very passionate but um you know one like bad blow up after a game can like ruin an entire day of competition um so i think you know i think a big thing i think is just remembering that you're all you're friends with all these people so um you know everyone should be treating each other like you are friends even when things tensions do get high and stuff acknowledge that people are going to make mistakes and you know rather than maybe flaming someone for making a mistake you know just acknowledge make sure you acknowledge the mistake don't ignore them but um yeah I think that was just a thing I noticed a few times, so specifically on the last day, it was just um, some very angry words being exchanged afterwards. So um, one of the harder things to do, I think, especially like, yeah, for like younger and newer players. But um, yeah, that'd be my big point of improvement for, for these guys. Um, and maybe that'll that'll help with their, um, as Rutt was saying at the Hobart performance anxiety on the last day. Um, <laughs> yeah any any last bits to add uh, for hobart service before we move on i think we're i good. guess 
I just just to, just fine. I think maybe uh, Captain Morgan's like the perfect person to have on the team for that. <laughs> Keeps yeah. everybody enjoying themselves. Like nobody uh, takes the game less seriously than Captain Morgan in terms of uh, <laughs> just making sure everyone's having a good time. So yeah, good yeah. good uh, piece of the puzzle there. All right, as well. Well done to Hobart Cerberus. Very much looking forward to seeing how they go over the course of nationals. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll see you then. Moving on to our 14th place team, we have Beam Blazers. So they were predicted 17th, so they predicted last place, and they were up three um, from their from their from their predictions. Um, round Robin Cascade one, they were in 15th. Cascade two, they moved up to 14th, and then they finished in 14th. So they climbed one spot over the course of the tournament. Um, on the team, we had Bubbles, the BMW, Elmo, Tricky, and Worthy. Um, yeah. Who's talking about the Inblazers? Who's got that run? I think oh, I know because I believed in them. I had these guys at 14th. <laughs> Nobody else did, but I had them up here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, and they they played like we were kind of hoping they would. Um, I, I think the experience levels of Brad as captain BMW, it was very huge for the team to just be able to be very level-headed, very much just like we're just going to play our roles, we're just going to exactly play to our ability play a standard game and just not panic and i think that's really important especially for finals so that we're not seeing them drop during finals um and yeah these guys uh you've got five solid players so um they, they pretty much just like yeah standard game there were sometimes early in the comp where like comms would be really disastrous that i saw um and they'd like be like what the hell and it's like this is what you get when you play with a bunch of players from different states and that's the challenge of coming into a mixed team with such little time um yeah like the bubbles bubbles uh looking at the stats bubbles went amazing um got a 10 chain tag which i want to highlight that we were looking at the chain tag stat and we were like you reckon it's possible to get over six? What are we what are we expecting to see at this comp? Maybe maybe six. And then someone would get six and we're like, oh my god, they've done it. Someone would get seven. It's like, oh my god, that's even more insane. How has someone done that? And then Bubbles comes out with ten. <laughs> so like uh Bubbles just locked an entire team out of a base for l literally like 30, 40 seconds straight, just both doors running at him, and he just kept on getting attacked every four seconds. So that's like insane to see. Uh so that was sick. Um I think uh, Tricky ended up as last line, which I don't. I don't think he loves in this maze. I I think he's better um, when he's last lining. He'd rather not have to be mobile because like these bases force mobility in last lines. So I think a team where you have someone else that would be happy to last line and take that role off Tricky would allow him to get on a door and be a bit more effective. But yeah, with the team comp they had, I think they played it well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it from me. I didn't see them as much as I would have liked to. I don't think. I think strategy-wise, um, from the one game we played against them, uh, it might have been in Cascade 1, actually. Um, they played a very, very heavy defense um, game. Um, yeah, and they would commit to the heavy defense for like for ages, and that's kind of like highlighted in their um, their average score as well. I think they had some of the lowest average scores of the, of the tournament. Um, yeah, like very heavy, like four or five defenders, and then you know you might have like bubbles like running around causing a ruckus um i definitely remember the game we played against them i think it was archangels and these guys it might have been um you know archangels um took a couple games off of us like aftershock actually and i was kind of like no nah, it's all good it's okay um you know beam blazers haven't gotten any bases so they're gonna like commit heavy like soon so we'll get our bases then and fuggum was like okay and then they just didn't happen. Um, uh, they just kept like field it, pointing and stuff. But um, is it the old defend into third place, or is it a good play? Are we talking here? Um, I mean, to be fair, I don't think they were that far off of us. Okay. Um, we we did get second, and Archangels ended up winning that game. But um, yeah, that was like my the one game I remember playing against these guys. That was uh, what happened. And I mean, looking at the average score, I imagine it was pretty similar throughout the course of the tournament. Um, unless Bot said, did you remember versing these guys and see anything different? Or uh, I don't remember. I think we may have played them once. I may have been sitting. I can't recall playing them. Um, but I did notice when I was looking through all the stats from all the teams, they did have the lowest base average across the whole team. 
Yeah. So I think their highest base average there is 0. 0.7. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is yeah. which is pretty low. Like most most teams have at least a couple of players, you know, approaching one essentially. Yeah, so it, it was clear they were playing a very defensive strategy, but their tag ratios were high. So they had all, all of their players except one were above a one uh, one tag ratio. So yeah, it was clear they were focusing on field pointing, and uh, that was that was their game essentially. Which in yeah. this arena is, is valid, uh, but maybe just a touch more um, offense ne was needed for them. Yeah, I think you can sort of field point until you're about two bases behind, and then you need to go all systems go. Like if you're two bases behind, you're, you're out of it. So they really need to probably catch up if they're in that scenario. Like seeing bubbles on like a base average this low is crazy because he's never that low. So um, yeah, bubbles was kind of just like, I think they were playing that kind of 4-1 structure a bit maybe where bubbles was kind of just floating around shooting stuff, which worked well, but probably needed to bring out a second to get some more bases. Yeah. yeah, and I think um, that kind of already covers the points of improvement for this team. Now, obviously, again, mixed team, we've got a Bendigo player, we've got two WA players and two Darwin players, but um, maybe just in terms of things that the these players can draw from this tournament home to, 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 their, to their actual teams that they're going to go to Nats with. Do we have any, any other bits for these guys? Um, I'm hoping oh. where the... Uh, Kicks his heels in a bit more at Nats because I know I know he can rail people when he tries, but he he is a tough man to convince to try. I think so. I, I'm hoping Nats brings it out of him. And he'll be playing on the Orcas, who are gonna, we're going to expect to be doing quite well. So maybe it'll get drawn out of him whether he whether he wants to or not. Right? <laughs> Let's see. You got anything for for this for this guy? Oh, I think it's just in their training, focus on the offensive side a bit more, um, get those coordinated attacks happening, uh, be willing to defend with two and go out with three if you need to. Um, you know, it can be a bit of a bold decision to be to do that in games because you're obviously taking a risk, you're leaving your defence undermanned. But uh, yeah, you need to be able to just practice it in training so you can pull it off in, in games, essentially. But that yeah. would be the main thing for me. Yeah, and I definitely think if you're going to go for a three-man attack, Hobart is almost the perfect arena to do. So it's it's the first time we've seen three-man attacks be meta. So it's really fun. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what we'll be training when we get there. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Was I supposed to say that? No, it's what every one of your Queensland teams did. So we have been yeah, well aware there's no, of what's no going secrets there. I think everybody should be, should, will be training it. Well, um, yeah, do we have any last things to add to Bean Blazers before we move on? We're all good. No worries. So in 13th place, we have WA Cowboys. Uh, so they're predicting 13th, finished 13th. So uh, they were even with their predictions. Um, on the team, we have Cowie, Red Devil, Mushu, Gigantor, and Weeb. Um, so round robin, Cascade 1 and Cascade 2, they were sitting in second to last. Um, with the you know the average score didn't change too much, but then on the last day there were one of three teams that had the biggest climb from Cascade Two to the finals. They climbed three spots, which is uh, very very commendable. So well done to these guys. And I think you know on the topic of <clears throat> what we've been talking about with um you know Hobart Cerberus in particular of like how you can really rope things together and perform on the last day. Um, these are all like experienced players, especially like between Weeb, Cowie, and Mushu, very experienced players um that are you know they've been they've been there enough times that they can they can keep their cool and keep it together on the last day and uh yeah i guess it's kind of shone through here um but uh runt did you want to walk us mm. through the cowboys how they play and that kind of stuff these are the ones contrary to beam blazers these are the ones i had no faith in and they were doing so well at sitting on that 16th place just like i predicted so i'm mad but i also commend them for climbing so much on the last day i was so happy throughout the whole comp in the nicest possible way i'm not like <laughs> celebrating you guys failing but i'm also very competitive and like to win this dumb points game so <laughs> My 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 kindest hatred for you guys for pulling it together so well on the last day. I was so happy, but um, well played. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think you uh, you kind of look at the stats and you can kind of see that they struggled throughout the whole comp. Uh, you've got all negative tag ratios. You've got um, ba base averages are surprisingly low well as well. 
yeah, um, for a team that I thought was one of the more offensive teams. Um, I think they often weren't getting the traction that they were hoping to throughout the whole comp, and then it cl finally clicked on the final day. They finally get got those bases without clean and without getting denied and yeah it all clicked uh you really saw that they had those like three core cool, very solid players that have been training together for a long time so they just came to a competition for fun they weren't expecting to do that well i'm pretty sure so when they just randomly like climb a bit on the last day that's just like happy days so uh i i, I thought it was interesting to watch these guys play because they looked so solid but they also weren't getting as much traction maybe it was a lack of training. I, I think that's where like the importance of training comes into it. These guys haven't been able to. Uh, so although their skills look solid, they look like they've been playing for years. They just aren't, they're still rusty. There's still a lot of rust on there. So that's why I think we saw them getting slapped around a bit by those lower tier teams in the first few days. And then they made a bit of a climb at the end when it's rust started to shed a bit. Yeah, the, the first thing that got me was the denial um average um it was clear that they were they were having a crack at attack and like that sometimes can also cost you tag ratio right if you're actually having a, a real crack at attacking the bases you're coughing up tags doing that like you're throwing yourself at base doors and stuff like that so these guys you know they're coming from a different system as well so they're trying to get used to the system they're trying to um some of these the players on this team have played in successful teams in the past so they know strategically how to play the game uh, they're probably just having a little bit of you know trouble ex executing uh and uh yeah that showed up in in the stats and with the denials and then of course like you said final day it all starts to click things start to happen the way they want them to and um, they get the results flip, flip their way so yeah good on them yeah, I mean, playing balls to the ball is full aggressive. Um, perhaps in the early days, they committed overly hard, but it's they almost used it as training, right? It's like we always tell new players, just shoot the base, just send it, just send it with whatever. Who cares if you get denied? They pretty much did that all competition. And the result is by the end of the competition, they felt comfortable shooting it from dumb spots, shooting it with big balls, just like straight in shots in base because they've just been training that all weekend, copying denials and knowing what does and doesn't work. So... It, it speaks to the value of just sending it uh, with base takes, I think. I think Wax took yeah. that um, that advice a little too seriously <laughs> when we soak around to, to their team. But um, <laughs> do we have any um, uh, standout players uh, from this from this team? Wax is just playing that long game. You wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, standout players. I mean, Red Devil, I, I, th I think, played pretty well. Um, like, yeah, playing higher than Mushu, for example, who's one of a more experienced player, um, perhaps in slightly more favorable roles. But I, yeah, it's still a bit rough, but better than better than we were expecting, maybe. Kelly appears to have got lot, lot, just from the numbers there. Uh, I did play these guys a lot, but Kelly appears to me to have probably had the best tournament. Um, mm -hmm. Just in terms of his tag ratio is decent. Um, his base average is around the same as the other. Like it look, appears that Red Devil Mushu and Cowie were doing most of the attacking, um, but Cowie was getting bases cleaner. He was around the competition average, which was like 0.7 to one denial a game kind of thing for those for those attacking players. Uh, so he was in that range, but uh, yeah, still managed to keep his keep his tag ratio up as well. So he appeared to have a pretty good comp. I will say this is one of the most confusing experiences I've had, and I'm hoping there's someone in the chat that can explain what the hell happened. Because I rocked up to their base, I can't see any defenders, and I listen and I hear, red's dumped, and they're on red. And then I'm like, okay, cool, there's a blue player waiting in the base, waiting to shoot that base, it's a dump base, they're waiting to do it, I'm gonna sit here and deny them, I'm just gonna hide and deny them. Base, I wait for 30 seconds, base comes up, and I walk in and I shoot a red player, and I'm like, why are they saying their own base is dumped? I'm so incredibly confused. Where are their defenders and why are they talking to each other but hiding and saying their own base is dumped? I was amazed. I I, I couldn't fathom what happened, so I'm hoping for an explanation. But yeah, I, I think this team was just chaotic through and through. Can't say I've heard that one before. That's, a, <laughs> that's very unique. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if you call your own t bases dumped, everybody's going to run there and you've got two teams fighting over your base. Maybe that was the thinking. It was a conversation <laughs> they, the two defenders had without anyone meant to hear it. I was so confused. <laughs> oh, That's what they want you to think, Ron. Yeah, That's literally. Think. Literally. Mm. Confusion is a strategy I, in, in Lazy I wasted, I wasted 30 seconds 
because I couldn't fathom the conversation. <laughs> Let him cook, of course. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, do we have any points of improvement for, for these guys um, before we move on to our 12th place team? Well, unfortunately, most of them aren't coming to nationals, which is sad to see. Um, oh, I'm, really? assuming, I'm assuming Gigantor is on our Canberra team, I believe, but and Red Devil will be on Quackening. So I think it'll be interesting seeing those players in their home teams. Yeah, well, it's um, unfortunate to not um, see... Is it So is it Weeb, Cowie, and Mushu aren't coming? Yeah, I believe so. I assume they're all busy or couldn't find a team or something. something better to do yeah. than being a nerd <laughs> playing laser tag, bro. Yeah, which is a shame because they bring such a great vibe to the game. Like, these guys, mm. those three, okay, always have so much fun playing. It's, it's sad to not have them, but it was good to have them for a pre at least. Um... Yeah. Well, Butza, did you have any last final thoughts for um, the WA Cowboys before we move on? Oh, just sad that they're not going to be there. Yeah. yeah. Miss those guys. Always good vibes when they're around. Is, is Are any of them coming? Is Red Devil playing? Yeah, Red Devil and Gigantor, I'm pretty sure. And Gigantor will be Canberra team because he lives in Canberra now, I think. Like, I, I think it's coming. Okay. Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate how bloody tall Gigantor is? And look how long his arm is. I just had a good look at that. Like, oh my <laughs> god. That looks ridiculous. I, that, that's crazy long arm. He uh, he needs to move it to a state with tall players at it. Because if he learns how to use his height, he'll be very, very scary. But I think he's just playing in states with short people and playing like a short person. So <laughs> I'd be really intrigued to see if he moves state again and what happens to him. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, the old, the classic, classic, you know, wax husky, go go gadget your arms mm. extended into the base, shoot you before you even realize what's happened. Um, I think that's always a, an observation I've made is, yeah, it doesn't look like <clears throat> he's like, um, uses that size to as much, to, as much to his advantage as he could. So yeah, that'd be a... <clears throat> He's in Canberra now. There's no, there's not really any tall people no. in Canberra. Is it? It's just Maybe a bunch of short a sh Short state to a short state. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. Well, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll have to do an instructional with the likes of Wax and Husky on how to <laughs> use go-go gadget arms. But anyway, um, we all ready to move on to our twelfth place team? What was the first thing Link asked you, Butzer? How do I use my long neck or something? Oh yeah. yeah, that was when Link first Sorry. started. He goes, oh. well, because I have a very long neck, and yeah, he was must have been, give, been asked by one of his teammates or something. You should go talk to Butzer about how to use your long neck for your advantage. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, right. it actually is a massive advantage. Like, I can see a right around corners and stuff like that. I actually, yeah, I'm very I'm right now. very neck very neck. happy with my long neck. <laughs> Yeah, it was. I was. Uh, the question did catch me by surprise, though. I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah." <laughs> it's <a> classic link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. So, if anybody needs long neck uh, advice, just in the chat, reach out. <laughs> reach or out. Ask I'm a long neck instructional. <laughs> <laughs> it's highly demanded instructional for Laser Sports Academy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Top five ways to use your long neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a tips and tricks video. All right, let's move on to our to our twelfth team. Uh, in twelfth place, we had Noodle Box. So predicted twelfth, so they were even with their predictions. On the team, we had Jam, Pug Salad, Noodle, Griffo, Cheeto, and Hazmat. Um, in terms of their um, placings over the course of the tournament, they were a little up and down. Sudden twelfth, dropped one to thirteenth, went up to eleventh, and then dropped one on the last day. Um, yeah, what's up? Talk, tell us about a bit about how Noodle Salad played and, you know, everything like that. Noodle Salad. Um, yeah, good old Noodle Box. Uh, well, it's this is, the, this is their first big tournament together, of course. Um, so a few of them have been around for quite a while playing. Uh, obviously, Griffo's played quite a bit, but outside of that, this will be their first Nats playing. So they're pretty uh, inexperienced, but... I felt like they played um, really, really well, given their level of experience. Uh, you've got somebody like uh, Pug Salad, who's um, GCing for the first time in like a big comp, uh, you know, against top level competition. Uh, 
it's a big challenge. Like it's really hard to be a good GC, let alone when you've only just started doing it, let alone when you're doing it against really hard competition. So I thought he did a really good job of that. He His tag ratio was at 0.95. It's pretty good. Uh, maintaining a, a, a tag ratio up there when you're trying to organize your team and everything like that. It's a hard job to do. Uh, they had some ups and downs. So they did break through their first win. I've got it written here somewhere. The first win was against the Outlaws and the Cowboys, who were, who were no slugs. So that was pretty impressive. They had a reasonably hard round robin draw as well. Uh, and they did very well without necessarily getting the results. Like I think the first game they ever played, they copped us and the Vikings in their very first round robin game, which is a nice introduction to, uh, to high level laser tag. And they didn't get like blown out of the water. They didn't get um, embarrassed at all. Like they were, you know, I think they got 16 K with the base and, you know, I think you guys were in second on tw early twenties or something like that. So um, they're only like six, seven K behind. Um, it's already bringing so, it up. It's not even the game. It is punching. I like it. <laughs> uh, so you remember that game that you guys lost? To yeah. Yeah. It was the nice little yeah, sort of transition. I think you guys got like 20 K like, <laughs> Yeah, no, good no, stuff. No. It was a low score. It was a low scoring game. Well, no, no, I'm not going to blame that. Given what, what you guys did to us in the final, <laughs> <laughs> it's fair to say uh, round robin game one Vikings was different to grand final Vikings. <laughs> uh, but we're talking about Noodlebox right now, right? So, uh, yeah. So uh, in the finals, what they get? They got a second by a 4K. Then they got a first. Then they got a third and a second. So. Um, they did have a couple of shockers throughout the tournament, uh, but not many. They only had a couple of those, and you're going to get that with a new team. Um, they had pretty much every game, other than a few outliers, they were right in them. So, uh, yeah, it was an impressive start for them. They've got, they're really kind of committed to their training. Uh, they um, gel well together. So Griffo's like the experienced player on the team that kind of keeps them keeps them together and makes sure that the vibes vibes are good. And yeah, they're young. So like any young team, they get dejected sometimes when they have a bad loss and stuff like that. So um, having somebody like Griffin on the team to just keep the perspective, you know, like it's only a game, just let, you know, just move on. Uh, we, we learn from it and we move on. Is I think that's really important for them. Uh, and I, did, I, I got the uh, fortunate advantage of staying in a Airbnb with them. So I can clarify that they were definitely were enjoying that each other's company outside of outside of laser tag, which is a, a, a huge, um, you know, it's a really important part of, of team success, I believe. So, yeah, and if you look down the list, I mean, all their tag ratios were good. Um, anywhere from, you know, point basically 0.88 to 1.13, which is pretty good for a new team. And Cheeto, just wanted to shout out to her. So Cheeto's a, um, a, a pretty new player. Like, this is her first big comp uh, to come out with a, with a tag ratio of 0.88 uh, with her level of experience was really, really impressive. And uh, yeah, and then of course Noodle and Jam were kind of their opening batsmen who who did who did quite well as well. So all in all, I think they got out of it what they needed. They needed just a good, uh, you know, a good hit out in the arena. Uh, they're, they're the kind of people that will study the footage and learn uh, and try to improve for for the nationals. So I expect them to, yeah, to to keep improving and growing from here where, where that stands for them at nationals we don't know because obviously there's more teams and everything like that and everybody's you know getting more experience and, and learning at the same at, at, a, at a same rate so or at a rate so but yeah have full faith that these guys are, are gonna you know learn a lot from what they experience at prenats three uh, how about how about you guys what do you guys see so I was very impressed with these guys. Uh, they were hyped up a lot before the comp, especially for a new team, and they lived up to the hype. They they, they played exceptionally um, with Queensland. It's like you're looking at new players and you're going, okay, so these are the best of the best new players they've got. They've they've been the top of their class kind of thing because Queensland has like a scaling system where you you have a whole bunch of people in leagues and you just and you take the top ones and you put them on a Nats team. So they're like new players, but they're already like the ones that have excelled so they're, they're insane off the bat like seeing the tie ratios seeing how much they work for kills seeing how much they're solid on packs is very very impressive um like i often had the job of just like hovering around their base and it sucks it, they, they make you work so bloody hard and they're really good at just getting those kills um hazmat still an insanely hard anchor to shoot out like um his I struggle with him more than most by far, and I, I, I say it every comp, but it's, it's a bloody pain in the ass to burst that tall left-handed, knows how to use that size, and just very hard to shoot out. Very, very solid anchor. 
uh, and you've got some reliable attackers. Uh, but however, they played a very defensive game a lot of the time, especially in those high tier games. They were very, very defensive. And I think that was perfect. That's that's how you got to play as that weak team in the arena. You got to go, we're going to be mauled. They're going to come for us. They know we're the weak team. They want to get bases off us. Let's just punish them and stay defensive and just get our pack points up by punishing the teams, trying to cannibalize the weak team. So I thought they played it perfectly from what I saw. Um, and I also think that Griffo, um, we talk about outside the arena, very helpful. Um, what I saw inside the arena was amazing. So she took those spots that the other players can't see need to be taken because of that experience. So there'd be a few times like I'd, I'd ref their games, I'd play their games and I'd see all their teams just like focused on that base, focus on where you'd expect to be focused on. But Griffo would see that player who's sitting behind him cannibalizing him and just sitting on the back go, that player needs to be neutralized or like that line of sight needs to be counted and just like see those things that you need an experienced player to see. So I think Griffo just adds so much to this team and that was really good to watch play out in a game. So yeah, very impressed overall. Yeah, I don't really have anything to um, add for this team because I think um, this was actually a team that we didn't end up versing at all. Um, or if we did verse them once, it might have been right at the start and I can't remember it. But I'm pretty sure we didn't verse Noodlebox. But um, yeah, um, no, it's just really excited to see how this team goes after you know their first big tournament together, especially like Prentice 3, um, given the teams that were there. Um, I'm fully exper expecting them to just absolutely tear up the... Um, the, the bottom tier of the tournament and um, see them, you know, on the fringes of, of that um, mid tier potentially. Um, yeah. And again, yeah, Hazmat, you know, Runt's been hyping up Hazmat's last line after pre nets one and two. And then he's pre nets three, hardest tournament at hardest pre nets so far in Hobart. And he's still pulling a very, um, very respectable tag ratio in the last line position. So very nicely done. Um, do we have anything to add for this team before we move on? Maybe in terms of improvements or anything? Yeah, I guess in terms of improvements, um, I think the thing that got me with the stats uh, was the denials. So, uh, which isn't necessarily always the fault of the person who gets denied because denials also are reduced by better coordination in attack. So obviously you have other players covering you when you're going for base. So it's not always the, the person putting cowboy shots into the base it could be that your defensive floaters haven't pushed up far enough to cover or your the person who's attacking with you hasn't positioned themselves correctly to, to cover but i think that's the kind of the next evolution for them is to coordinate their attacks just that little bit better um and uh, have their uh sort of defensive floaters pushing up to support um at the right times so it's like that in-game decision making that is so valuable in hobart having your, um, you know, your third defender just pushing out to support the attack just at the right times when there's when there's the opportunities too. So, yeah, that's the next evolution for these guys is to get their attacks a little bit more coordinated. And um, I think also just uh, – I just noticed it was one game I refed. I've already told them this. I, I just noticed there's just more experience needed in terms of playing big games because there was one game they lost because there was a comm that was missed on one of their doors – uh, and then a player came in, took their defender out and took their base and they lost the game. And it was in the last five seconds of the game. And the reason they missed the comm is because there was so much chaos happening at the door. They just, you know, when there's so much happening that a, a, a new player can just kind of stop and forget to comm or there's just too much happening. Um, so that kind that of a thing. So I think just more games, I'll get the, the nerves will start to diminish and they'll start to just um, be more present in the game so that they just are more consistent, getting 100% 100 of their comms out 100% of the time. So they're probably the two big things, I think, for, for the noodle box. Right, have you got anything to add? Oh, I just want to... Oh, it just sounds so funny to just like cherry pick one thing Butza says and just be like, the Butza mentality, attack, put shots in bases die randomly and then blame the person outside i love it but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I do totally agree with what you're saying of leveraging your defenders and your other attackers but it just sounds so fun out of context <laughs> the 
there can also be cowboy shots that can happen from putters putting shots into the basket. <laughs> nah, nah, That's nah, another nah, thing. Nah, that nah, fault, <laughs> it's always the guy on the outside's fault. It's always the guy on the outside. Yeah, no. Exactly. Yeah. Me putting a shot on when I know there's going to be defenders on both doors are going to activate in time to shoot me, and I've got no comms. It was still <laughs> someone else's fault. <laughs> why did why did my door defender on the outside at my base leave defense and then shoot all these people in the back? Not cool, that's guys. Why, that's why you gotta have twinkles. He's never on the door anyway. True. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Um, anything left for for Noodle Box before we move on? No. We're all good. No wackers. Alrighty.